I'm the director of the Institute of Contemporary Art Miami. I'm Ellen Saul-Peter. I, I studied international management, but I was deeply engaged in the arts. My work-study job in college uh, was at the Smithsonian Institution in the Division of Performing Arts, but one of the wonderful things about working at the Smithsonian at that time is that all of the performing arts took place in the art museums. So we got to go to the art museums and set up a Sarah Vaughan concert in the Museum of Natural History and go to the East Wing, which was relatively new, the contemporary wing of the National Gallery, um, and work among the minimalist sculptors. Uh, and one of the things that I loved so much was in working as a sound engineer, an assistant sound engineer, uh, when I worked for the Smithsonian, was that there was a collaboration between Philip Glass, the composer, and Saul LeWitt, the visual artist who recently passed away, and um, Lucinda Childs, the choreographer, it was called Dance. Mm -hmm. And I got to see a creative community across disciplines coming together to make art that mattered. And it was about engaging the audience. And so you had dance people coming for Lucinda, you had visual arts people coming for Saul Lewitt, and then you had Philip Glass making this amazing piece of music, bringing it all together. Mm -hmm. And watching that creative process through the rehearsals and watching them work, I think was probably a seminal moment for me and kind of going, I, I want to be part of that. I began yeah. with Art Basel last year, <laughs> uh, so crazy art week. Um, but I've been coming to Miami for years and I have family in Miami and had spent time here both during the Art Basel, you know, over the last decade plus, but also before that. And even did some early studio visits in Miami um, way back when. And actually, it's so fabulous for me. There's a local artist, uh, Dara Friedman, and her husband, Mark Hanforth. And I invited Dara and Mark to do an exhibition at Thread Waxing Space, the institution I ran in New York um, in the 90s. So I've been coming back and forth for a long time. No. To be the director of the Institute yeah, of Contemporary yeah. Art Miami, it means so many things. I work closely, as all directors do, with the staff. I shape the staff. Um, I'm not a micromanager. We, I am blessed that I inherited not only a great staff, but a terrific board. Okay. Um, so I work closely with the trustees on charting the course for the organization, making sure we do not have mission creep that we stay on mission, that our staff, as lean as it is, implements the extraordinary um, array of programming that we have here in our temporary home as well as in our new permanent home when we open. Uh, it involves everything from working with curatorial on the content, working with our education team on making sure we engage the communities that we serve um, through our public programs and education programs and outreach programs, making sure that that content is distributed online as well as on site. Um, it ensures raising money to make sure that we're sustainable and viable. Mm -hmm. uh, it ensures making sure that we have and are following a strategic plan so that we have a roadmap. Um, you know, so many things. I think the wonderful thing about being the director of an art museum is every day is different. So we are planning on opening our new permanent home in the design district just a few blocks from here uh, in late 2017. We will open for the Miami community before we open for Art Week. Okay. Um, and we're very excited about that. We'll have a series of opening programs uh, that will engage all of our audiences and constituencies, um, and then obviously we'll go from there. Yes, I've been able to work very closely with the team to influence to the extent possible how the building is shaping up, but it's really, it's an extraordinary um, gift to come into a situation where both the land and the building were funded when I arrived and you know already I was prior to my starting the groundbreaking took place yeah, oh, so but I was able to come to the groundbreaking which was so wonderful so in you, November you have some input. yeah I have some input of course we've been open in our temporary home since December of 2014 mm -hmm. and by the time we close and our temporary home, we will have had a number of extraordinary exhibitions. So our goals for the ICA moving forward is to continue that trajectory of bringing great art, both global and local, to the community, to engage across diverse constituencies, whether it is through our outreach programs. Um, we work with Lotus House, we work with Pride Lines, we work with Breakthrough Miami. 
Uh, we work with juvenile justice organizations, the school districts, so really reaching out to a broad array of constituencies um, and bringing them in, uh, whether it is just through tours, education programs, outreach programs, or just general visitation. So my goal is to have robust visitation on site, to collaborate across the city of Miami with our existing partners, new partners, our cultural mm -hmm. colleagues, um, and to make sure that the museum is sustainable, mm -hmm. uh, that it has the funds it needs to operate its, uh, you know, without, um, without relying on any one yeah. sector too heavily. We have, uh, we are in the very quiet phases of a sustainability and operational campaign. Uh, that we will announce more going forward. Um, and we're very excited about that. There's enormous excitement around the new museum, our permanent home, the design district. For us, the neighborhood here is really central. You can get to it from South Miami, you can get to it from North Miami, you can get to it from the beach. And we look at, at the regions of Miami-Dade and we say, well, we're this zone. We're in the Miami Design District and there is Locust Projects, there's the Haitian Cultural Center, there are other cultural organizations here, there are going to be more restaurants as the Design District continues to evolve. Um, and one of the things I love about the new ICA is that we're built into the fabric of this community. We're on the border of, we have Buena Vista to the north, we have Little Haiti to the west, we have Alapata not very far in Wynwood. So we're in this extraordinary creative community of such diverse neighborhoods and everyone is welcome. The ICA Miami is free and open to the public. Mm -hmm. And we have made the commitment to that in our new building. We are free here in our temporary space, but we really asked ourselves, is that important? Should we have an admission fee? Should we have a gate? And we said, no, it is really important for us to be free and accessible for the community of Miami. We're new, so our audience is growing, and we're in temporary space. When we open our new home, we, of course, see our audiences growing. We see, and, you know, for me, what is a museum in the 21st century? You know, and in other cities, we like to say that the museum is the third space. So you have home and you have work and then you have this third gathering space. And for museums, it's a place of education, it's a place of contemplation, it's a place of social activity. You know, why do people go to museums? Mm. And so in Miami, you have also the outdoors, you have the beach and you have the activities outdoors. So we might be the three and a half to four space, you know, in a city like Miami. Um, but we see our audience being general cultural visitors, visitors to Miami, mm -hmm. um, residents of Miami, partnerships through our engagement, as I mentioned, with some of the organizations and others that we work with, art and artists. We run an extraordinary program called ICA Speaks. And ICA Speaks is really about our the artist in our collection. And one of the things that every good city needs is artists, and they need dialogues around art. And so it's something that's taking place at other institutions as well. But we have this series where we invite an artist whose work is in our collection. So we had Richard Tuttle here, he's a very well-known artist. We had Nicole Eisenman, we had Jorge Pardo. Um, and they came and they had an evening, could have been a lecture, some of them lectured about their work, some of them did a dialogue with my chief curator Alex Gartenfeld, but they talked about their work and the audiences for those was everyone from the local artists who live here, other cultural workers and supporters and collectors, but also art students and FIU and University of Miami, I mean Miami-Dade, students came. So it was this great coming together and people kept saying, and in the few months I've been here, we want more. We need more original programming. We need more dialogues. We need an opportunity. I think the city is hungry for cultural content. Mm. Okay. And you know, I always like to say that art elevates my quotidian existence. You know, it's really about informing my everyday. Mm. And I think that the more we learn about art, the more we look at art, the more we make better decisions as a society.